Additionally, the speaker's residence was first to receive as a residential net metering license, reinforcing our commitment to promote a green economy and renewable. You would be surprised to know that in 2015, when we converted the parliament and the speaker's residence, there was not a single government building that was on solar, not a government residence or a building. So we conducted an energy audit and we decided we have to go green, not only for the climate, but to save uh, for, for financial savings also. And it was quite successful. So Pakistan is deeply committed to combating climate change through significant measures, including the promotion of renewable energy, the protection of our forest and enhancement of climate resilience. We are actively investing in sustainable energy solutions, implementing policies to preserve our vital forests and development strategies to adopt climate impact. As you must be aware that uh, the government of Pakistan has launched a 70 billion initiative for Balochistan for solarization. One, the distances are far. It's difficult to provide electricity. If it is provided, there are line losses and other issues. So I think that initiative will not only uh, make us green, but it will save a lot of uh, leakage, losses, which are a burden on the rest of the country. Pakistan also plays an active role in international climate negotiations, advocating for the rights and needs of vulnerable communities. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change is no longer a distant threat. It is a present reality affecting every aspect of our lives especially in developing nations like Pakistan. The 2002 floods, 20, through 2022 floods highlighted the severe impact of climate change on women and children. We are disproportionately affected, resulting in higher mortality rates, greater exposure to gender violence. And the, the people who visited the flood affected areas can only imagine the loss that Pakistan incurred <clears throat> in excess of, I think, $33 billion plus the loss of life, uh, livestock, schools, houses, that was too big for Pakistan to bear. Despite women producing up to 80% of food in developing countries, they lack equal access to resources like land and technology. Um, we are also in the process of uh, forming a, a parliamentary committee on gender mainstreaming. We have to have more women given opportunity in jobs, in all government and other jobs. So it will be the parliament's uh, We formed that committee. Um, hopefully I'm waiting for the chairman Senate to send me the names. We will form it and that will be looking after and protecting the interest of uh, the females in Pakistan, inshallah. Various studies by the United Nations show that equal access to women should increase farm yield by 20 to 30 percent, feeding an additional 100 to 150 million people. In Pakistan, I'm personally committed to empowering women members of the National Assembly. This commitment is reflected in the fact that four parliamentary forum, forums within the parliament, and out of these four, three are led by women, who I think are maybe slightly better than men parliamentarians. I'm using the word slightly so that you stay within the <laughs> limits of, but they're definitely better, hardworking, more focused.